welcome to today's episode of the Balancing Hormones Naturally podcast, where we offer actions and steps you can take today to start supporting and balancing your hormones. This is your podcast host, Leah Brueggemann. I am honored and excited to be your guide on your way to better understanding your hormone health and how it affects your everyday life. Hey ladies, we are back. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about the foundations for hormones and the foundations for just health in general. And I'm excited about this because we can get all fancy with all the things, but honestly, your foundations, they need to be there, okay? Now, before we keep going, there are so many amazing listeners on here and I love it when you shoot me shoot me a message and you tell me that you found me on the podcast and tell me what episodes you love because I love getting ideas from you but if you've been listening and you've been loving the podcast please stop right now unless you're driving hit pause and go to the iTunes app and rate and review balancing hormones naturally this helps so much for new people to find us, but also lets me know like what you're loving and it means the world to me. So this, I love this. I love doing the podcasting. And so this would be amazing if you would help support me in that way. Okay. Moving on to what we need to do now. Um, by the way, I'm down in the basement, you guys, and I always come down here in short sleeves and I don't know why I think it's going to be different every single time I have to go back upstairs and give a sweatshirt because it's so cold down here. Anyways, so moving on. All right, so let's talk about the foundations of hormones. And last week we chatted about stress and that's going to be one we're going to talk about. It's going to be one we're going to talk about. But you know, one of my favorite things to talk about is cycle syncing. I love cycle syncing. If you haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen all about using nutrition to support the rise and fall of your hormones. And I I would say that it's like step two of like my foundations. It's not the first thing that I start with um, because I love cycle syncing. Don't get me wrong, but it is a little bit fancier than what your foundations are needing, right? And what are your foundations, okay? Your foundations are going to be your blood sugar. It's going to be your sleep. It's going to be food sensitivities. It's going to be exercise. And you're over here like, exercise? Are you kidding me, Leah? Bear with me, guys. Bear with me, okay? So the first one, let's talk about blood sugar balance or diet, nutrition. Um, I'm not talking about diet as in cutting calories. I'm talking about diet as like the diet you eat, the nutrition you eat every day. Blood sugar balance is not just for the diabetics. And I know you're like, but I don't have diabetes, Leah. I don't need to worry about my blood sugar. Honey, yes, you do. Do you get that afternoon slump? Do you get hangry when you get hungry are you not hungry in the morning then yes honey you need to talk about your blood sugar without balanced blood sugar the rest of your hormones can also not do what they were supposed to do why because blood sugar also sends cortisol on its own roller coaster and we know cortisol on its own roller coaster affects all your other sex hormones so blood sugar so important For example, if your blood sugar drops at nighttime, you may be waking up in the middle of the night because when our blood sugar drops, cortisol is going to raise because cortisol brings our blood sugar back up. And then we have a spike in blood sugar, which in your cortisol, sorry, I tripped over my own words there, um, which wakes you up in the middle of the night. Okay. So blood sugar balance, so important. It's one of your foundations. And I see people so many times that want to like, get into, I want to cut this food out. I want to cut this food out. I want to do this. I'm eating all fancy. I'm eating all clean. I'm doing all this. And I'm like, that's great. Is your blood sugar balanced? 
That is the number one thing I talk about in every single hormone program and coaching that I do. Literally every single one. You can ask every single one of my clients, what do I start with? Them sending me their meals and we are assessing their blood sugar balance. We're looking at their blood sugar balance. We're seeing how they're doing, how it's making them feel. Everyone's um, perfect balance is going to be a little bit different, but the structure is always the same. You want to be having a protein, fat, fiber, carb at every single snack and meal. Every single one. Every single one. And notice how I said fiber carb. And the reason why I said that is because a lot of times we forget the fiber aspect of the carb. You know, like veggies are high in fiber. Fruit is high in fiber. Um, potatoes are high in fiber. Quinoa is high in fiber. A bagel, not so much. So you are needing a little bit more fiber there. Okay. So this is going to look like high protein, high fat breakfast with a little bit of carb within 30 minutes of waking and then every snack and every meal, protein, fat, fiber, carb. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be chatting about what that can kind of look like for each one of your meals. So I like half my plate to be veggies, a quarter protein, and then a quarter fat and carb. And then obviously if you're making soups and stews and all that kind of stuff, it can be completely like mixed together. It's, it's not that you have to be staring at your plate like that, but it can be helpful to break it down that way. Some people need a little bit more carbs. Some people need a little bit more fat. So you just kind of have to play around with what's going to work best with you. And that's why with all of my one-on-one clients, I'm looking like they send me their meals so I can look at them and we can make sure that they're feeling amazing. And so when we're talking about blood sugar balance, I think it's also important to not forget our coffee in the morning because how many of us want to grab our coffee as we roll out of bed? Like literally you roll out of bed and the coffee goes beep, beep, beep. And you like walk over there and you just grab your coffee. (laughs) Okay. So this is my intake on coffee. So there's, there's a couple different things here. Um, I love coffee. So let's start off with that. Um, We're not going to be bashing coffee here, but let's talk about how you can use coffee to support your hormones and your blood sugar without it causing detriment. So a, you have to find out if you're super sensitive to caffeine. Some people are really sensitive to caffeine and it's just not going to be the best bet for them. It causes anxiety. It causes their cortisol to go nuts, all of that kind of stuff. So you really want to be paying attention to that. But as a rule, If you don't have that big of an issue with coffee, let's talk about how we can still love it and still use it without it causing so many issues to our cortisol and our hormones, okay? So first, first, make sure you eat your breakfast first. Don't start off with coffee. Coffee does spike your cortisol, okay, which is going to affect your blood sugar, okay? So remember... We don't want to spike our cortisol first thing in the morning. We want to just start off nice and gentle. So have your breakfast first. Caffeine can also affect your absorption of nutrients, which is why I recommend eating your breakfast first and then moving on to your coffee. And then there's a couple ways to consume it so that it doesn't affect your cortisol levels as much, okay? And that's going to be consuming it with some fat and some protein. So how I like to do that is I will, you can put some heavy whipping cream in it. You can do raw milk. If that's what you're into, you can do some coconut cream or something like that. And I put a scoop of collagen peptides and then therefore you are getting um, some protein and you're getting some amino acids from the collagen. And then you're also getting some fat. And so therefore you can enjoy your coffee without it causing as much detriment. Now, some other things to remember though, is coffee is one of the most highly sprayed crops out there. So if you're wondering about glyphosate and all that kind of stuff, I do always buy organic coffee. That's really important to me. Um, Coffee can also be one of those things that can be high in mold. So if you have um, really big sensitivity to mold and detoxing from it, you do want to be really careful with your coffee. I use king coffee, which is a mushroom coffee, which is something else you can do um, if you are dealing with um, anxiety and issues with coffee. A lot of people can do better with mushroom coffee. That's why I use king coffee. Um, It has reishi spores in it. So basically what it does is it has a slow release of the caffeine there for you. And then it's not going to cause such a spike for you. Okay. So 
We talked about blood sugar balance. We talked about using coffee effectively. Um, the other thing that I want to just remind you is that I feel like we're all or nothing when it comes to our nutrition. And if there's one thing that I can bang into your head, it's going to be balance your blood sugar. Okay, even if you're going to have pizza for dinner, enjoy that pizza, but please balance your blood sugar, which means what does pizza have? Fat and carb. What do you need to help balance it out? You need protein. So, okay, maybe we have two pieces of pizza and then we have chicken or fish or some sort of protein. And so it's not going to cause such a drastic blood sugar spike. Okay, so blood sugar balance isn't about restricting. It's about how you can rearrange your food a little bit to just support your blood sugar balance so you aren't getting that afternoon crash and you aren't getting hangry, okay? I've had people, what we haven't even started an elimination to figure out if they have food sensitivities and they already are starting to feel less bloated and have more energy just from balancing their blood sugar. Okay, I, I'm done pounding that into the sand, okay? So that's number one, balance your blood sugar. Number two is going to be rest, sleep. Okay. Sleep hygiene is so important. So many of us are just go, 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 go. We don't sleep. And when we are resting, that is when our cortisol is at its lowest. That's when our liver is flushing out. Our adrenals are recharging. Everything is just flushing and detoxing and healing. And yet we just skip sleep or we're on our phone scrolling TikTok all night long instead of just relaxing and going to bed. Okay. So rest, that's going to be, maybe let's get off our phone a half an hour before bed silence or listen to some relaxing music, do some stretching, do some reading, um, do some meditation and then go to bed. Try, try and be getting in bed before 11. 10 would be great, but 11 would be, I guess, permissible. Um, and just really supporting our sleep. If you could just put some healthy sleep boundaries around to support that rest and recharge, and you were consistent at it for 30 days, you would be amazed at the effect it has on your energy and your hormones and your digestion. We'll get into like mouth breathing. I feel like in digestion at night in a whole nother episode, that's time for another episode. Okay. So we have nutrition, blood sugar balance, and then we have rest in our sleep. Okay. And then we have exercise. And the reason why I brought this up is I have an instructor who says that not exercising is as bad for your body as smoking. So I don't know if that's necessarily true or he's just trying to pound something into my head, which is, you know, possible too. But the point is that we should be getting out and moving our body. It helps increase our sensitivity to insulin. And if you are in an exhaustive phase and super tired, just go on some gentle walks, do some stretching. Okay. If you have a little bit more energy, maybe you want to look into doing some weightlifting or some Pilates or some yoga or something like that, but you need to move your body. Okay. This isn't just like, I'm trying to lose weight. So I'm exercising. That's not what, that's not what exercise is. It's not a it's for moving your body, it increases your sensitivity to insulin, it's good for your heart health, it's good for your joints, it's good for your muscles, it's good for your digestion, it's good for all these things. And it's good for testosterone, especially, especially, um, like, everybody needs to do this. But I mean, the effects of just walking, especially for women with PCOS is incredible with increasing that sensitivity to insulin and helping your body manage testosterone better. So you guys, just get out and walk 20 minutes, 30 minutes, start small. Maybe you haven't walked in forever. Could you do five minutes? Can you do five minutes every day? And then let's move up from there, okay? Stress reduction, okay? We talked about this in the last episode, so I'm not going to harp on it too long, but definitely move into looking at your stress reduction. It's so, 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 so important, okay? And... I, yeah, I'm not going to harp on it. Just listen to the last episode. And then the last one, um, this isn't really a foundational thing, but supplementation can be necessary depending on where you're at with your health. Um, you may need to supplement something you're missing in your diet. You may need to support something while your body is healing. Um, I believe that supplements kind of supercharge your, your results a little bit. They can get you there faster depending on what you're needing. Okay. 
Did you notice that I didn't talk about anything fancy? I didn't talk about anything like ridiculously over the top hard. It's all about consistency. So I want you to find one thing that you can start with and we're going to start implementing it this week. I want you to message me on Instagram and tell me what the thing is that you are going to start implementing. Okay. Accountability is key. Okay. And of course, if you want more support on this, then that is where you will want to look for one-on-one coaching. And I have one spot open, so well, it will open up in a week. So go ahead and shoot me a message and we can chat and see if it's a good fit um, and get you seeing results. But the reason why I stress these foundations, you guys, is I see everybody like trying these new these new diets or I just went vegan this week or I just started doing this this week and it's like you need your foundations nothing fancy is going no there's no magic pill there's no silver bullet you have to start with your foundations and then build upon that if your foundations are not there no matter how many fancy things you do it's not gonna make a difference okay that's my rant for the day Thank you for listening to today's episode of Balancing Hormones Naturally. If you found this helpful, I would love for you to share it with a friend and post it on your stories and tag Balancing Hormones Naturally podcast so we can get this message out. You can find me on Instagram at Leah underscore B-R-U-E-G and I would absolutely love to hear from you.